for um, watching. Thanks for uh, braving the elements to be here. Wow, you guys must be from out of town because uh, <laughs> you must be from strong places because we uh, saw some weather today. We don't ever see here. We got hit with rain. We got hit with hail. We even got a light dusting of snow in Southern California, in Hollywood. It even had the audacity of snow on the Hollywood sign. <laughs> And of course, everybody's complaining about how, this is a great example of how different LA is from other places. The earth itself moves in the middle of the night. We don't even get out of bed, but a little, just a little bit of snow, we will not leave the house. We're scared. <laughs> you okay, Guillermo? Everything it's, all right at home? It's freaking cold, Jimmy. It's When's, <laughs> yeah. When is the last time you saw snow here? Oh, wow. Long time ago. And, he, <laughs> and he's an actual snowman, so yeah. it's... Yeah, uh, long time ago, yeah. And uh, by the way, compared to the rest of the country, we have it very easy. In Michigan, hundreds of thousands of houses are without power. Uh, there's a huge snow and ice storm there, which became as surprisingly good news to an announcer at a high school basketball game in Hamilton, Michigan. 57-45. Hawkeyes take it home. As Lusk makes his way over the student section. And Lusk calls the snow day. Breaking news! Let's just call the snow day right here at the student section! Oh my goodness! Woo! No school for me tomorrow! That kid really hates school. I mean, it's funny, but it's a, that's a red flag right there, and they need to do something about that. The Department of Defense has uh, finally released an image, a photograph of that Chinese spy balloon the military shot down a couple of weeks ago. Look at this thing. It, it's a lot more elaborate than I assumed it was. I thought it was just a balloon. I know it was a balloon carrying the Hubble Space Telescope. It's huge. <laughs> if it wasn't a spy balloon, somewhere there's a 300-foot-tall Chinese toddler crying his eyes out right now. <laughs> and uh, look at that again, because it's a selfie taken by the pilot you see on a YouTube plane. We got billion dollar satellites up there. The only picture we got of this thing is from dude, dude's iPhone. It's, <laughs> are pilots supposed to be taking selfies while they fly a plane? And if you're wondering how the Pentagon knew that the balloon came from China, it turns out they forgot to take off the sticker. And <laughs> even our UFOs are made in China. Meanwhile, this investigation into uh, Trump and his efforts to steal the election in Georgia is ballooning. I mentioned this last night. The four-person of the special grand jury made the rounds on the cable news channels. Her name's Emily Kors, and she's quite a character. I thought it'd be really cool to get 60 seconds with President Trump of me looking at him and being like, do you solemnly swear? And me getting to swear him in? I just, I kind of just thought that would be an awesome moment. Yeah, yeah, for sure, it would be awesome, but it gave Trump and his lawyers now an opportunity to claim that her doing interviews has poisoned the process. And you know, they're real sticklers for the rules at Team Trump. <laughs> there was a good deal of backlash against this woman, and as a result, most of her social media accounts have been deleted, with the exception of her Pinterest page. Those never go away, they're like HPV. <laughs> and her Pinterest includes several collections of pins dedicated to Wicca and witchcraft. <laughs> So now when he calls it a witch hunt, he can blame it on an actual witch. <laughs> From a legal standpoint, the judge in the case said Emily didn't do anything wrong. The only thing she is not legally allowed to discuss are deliberations that she had with the grand jurors while they were alone, which she didn't do. Apparently, she's allowed to talk about anything else, including the final report. So probably the most that'll happen is Trump's lawyers will have another opportunity to file nuisance objections and delay the verdict, which is basically Trump's strategy for everything. He's almost 80. If he can keep delaying long enough, he'll get the ultimate get out of jail free card. <laughs> and while we wait for the other shoe to drop in Georgia, we got an update on the investigation into the January 6th insurrection. The special counsel issued a subpoena for Ivanka Trump and her husband, Jared Kushner, which I don't know what the point of subpoenaing Ivanka. You know she's just gonna plead the Saks Fifth, right? I mean. <laughs> Is Donald Trump your father? I do not recall. <laughs> and Jared, serving Jared raises some important and interesting legal questions like, can you subpoena a mannequin? <laughs> Meanwhile, Daddy Donald has been trying to exploit the poisonous situation in East Palestine, Ohio, for political gain. He went there yesterday to drop off crates of Trump water. Not a joke. <laughs> Trump ice, crates of them, and uh, also lash out at President Biden. His response 
to the toxic train wreck. Trump told locals that the Biden administration showed indifference and betrayal. But turns out, and you're not going to believe this, there's more to the story. <laughs> Trump claimed he was there to help. So when Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg showed up today, he was asked how he might be able to help. Well, one thing he could do is uh, uh, express support for reversing the deregulation uh, that uh, happened on his watch. I heard him say he had nothing to do with it, even though it was in his administration. Uh, so if he had nothing to do with it, and uh, they did it in his administration against his will, uh, maybe he could come out and say that, uh, uh, that uh, he supports us moving in a different direction. I'm sure he'll do that. That sounds like him, right? <laughs> What Buttigieg is referring to is during the Trump administration, the Republican-led Congress eliminated rail safety measures that could have prevented an accident like this. Even his foxy friends indicated that the Trump administration was to blame. Speaking of the White Good House, uh, apparently regulations regarding train safety were changed during the Trump administration. Uh, this particular railroad and others lobbied President Trump to dismantle an Obama-era rule. Uh, but ultimately, the Trump administration undid that and said the costs exceeded the benefits. Trump said the same thing about buying Eric swimming lessons. <laughs> but even though his own sycophants are pointing fingers, Trump said he had nothing to do with it at all. Biden, or rather, Buttigieg's criticism of you pulling back rail regulations. Do you think it would have made no, a difference? No, had nothing to do with it. Had nothing to do with it. No, he's got to work in the airports. We've never had airports like this. We're like a third, a third world nation. <laughs> when do you think the last time he went to an airport was? <laughs> 19, I don't know, 79? Wait, last time he was at an airport, the stewardesses were smoking while they were. <laughs> So now, dummy, who could have stayed out of this whole thing is being held responsible for making safety last. But fortunately for him, he's got an ardent defender in one Donald J. Jr. Pete Buttigieg, you saw in the clip earlier, he's taking some personal time because, you know, 19 days isn't enough time, plus the time he spent chest feeding while we were in the midst of a supply chain crisis and 350 million Americans <laughs> were depending on him to do his damn job. But there is no accountability. There's not even the expectation of these guys doing their jobs. And what is your job exactly? I mean, <laughs> seriously, besides yelling at your laptop, what is it that you do for a living? What do you write on your tax return, son? <laughs> Donald Trump Jr. is the only guy in America who claims himself as a dependent. <laughs> Fox News, by the way, they're not having a great week. Over the weekend, very damning text messages were released between some of their on-air hosts that revealed in print that they knew they were lying to their viewers about Trump's imaginary election fraud. And whenever they get cornered, they turn to an old friend to distract artificial outrage. First, it was the green M&M, then it was the gender-neutral Mr. Potato Head, and now the latest threat to America is disabled-friendly Legos. <laughs> Lego is going woke. The company unveiling a range of new characters in the effort to be more inclusive. Lego says the new characters will promote diversity and understanding. Some will have anxiety issues. I don't know how you show that. One will have a missing limb, another Down syndrome. These are really important issues. Yeah. Do you want Lego in there? Definitely not. But what's so fascinating about this story is the divide in the country. Republicans think it's insane that they're forcing identity politics into Legos. Democrats are upset that they didn't make a drag queen stripper. Yeah. I have to admit, I am pretty bummed about that. I was thinking about organizing a march to protest. Why anybody would be upset about a Lego that represents people who are missing a leg, I, I have no... I mean, they're called Legos. They're not legs O's, OK? And I also find it interesting that Fox News... Yeah, they have so much anger directed at Legos, considering the fact that most of them have Lego haircuts. <laughs> but that's how it goes. And guys, here's an idea. Instead of constantly bitching about these products, make your own things. Nobody's stopping you. Make your own homophobic potato dudes or your <laughs> angry white guy breakfast cereals or your little plastic bricks to build a wall around a sombrero. Do whatever you want. Because this, I have some Fox News for you. 
You're embarrassing yourselves. Huge yes, corporations have gone woke. Disney is going woke. Our healthcare system is going woke. Investments going woke. The famed French cathedral going woke. Microsoft Word is the next one to go woke. One of America's favorite candies is going woke. Victoria's Secret is going full woke. U.S. Census Bureau, apparently it's going woke too. Pizza so Hut has gone woke. Walmart is going woke. The NFL is going woke. Baseball is going woke. The National Hockey League has apparently gone woke. Cambridge Dictionary, they're going woke. Google going woke. AI programs have gone woke. The army is going woke. My Little <laughs> Pony is going woke. Captain America going woke. Minnie Mouse is going woke. Wordle is going woke. Video games going woke. Woke media. Woke agenda. Woke algorithm. Woke universities. Woke prosecutors. Woke Pentagon. Woke religion. Woke apocalypse. Guess who's going woke? The Muppets. Oh. <laughs> Not Kermit, too. That's, um... <laughs> well, he, they're right. Things are a mess. Speaking of embarrassing, George Santos, just when he thought <laughs> it couldn't get worse than stealing puppies from the Amish, we find out, yes, it can. According to Vice News, misrepresentative Santos also lied about helping sick children. On his campaign website, he claimed he and his family had engaged in helping children with EB, which is a rare genetic disorder, but there's no record of George Santos or anyone associated with him ever do, doing anything for children with EB. Apparently, it's part of his work with the Fake-A-Wish Foundation. And <laughs> we have to wonder, how many lies are they going to uncover? We've been goofing on George Santos for a month now. The truth is, somebody this good at making stuff up doesn't belong in Congress. He belongs in Hollywood. He would fit right in here. He's, so far, we learned George Santos is um, not a former college volleyball player, not a ninja, not Banksy, not the real Slim Shady, never dated Charo, didn't invent the Floby, uh, doesn't train dolphins, not in Weezer, wasn't Salt, wasn't Peppa, wasn't the Coppertone baby, not the Philly fanatic, not the Mandalorian, is not one of Oprah's favorite things, and his penis doesn't speak French, so. And I'm sure there'll be more knots by tomorrow. Well, until then, there's an organization that has been designed to handle just this sort of thing. Do you or someone you voted for struggle with a serious chronic condition commonly known as BS? No, I was not a drag queen in Brazil. BS is a rare but treatable disease whose symptoms include lying about your resume, lying about your name, lying about your criminal status in another country, lying about your volleyball scholarship, lying about helping sick kids, lying about helping sick dogs, lying about your mother dying in 9-11, and lying about every single aspect of your life. Fortunately, there's hope. You can help politicians suffering from BS with a donation to the Government Emergency Organization regarding growing epidemics surrounding advanced neurological topics or symptoms. George Santos. What can you say about the source of that money? Huh? With your large and generous contribution, George Santos will fight BS, giving your Congress people more time to steal puppies from the Amish. Please write a check to George Santos today and help beat the BS. I'm President Michael Jordan Santos, and I approve this message.